Okay, today is May 1st, 2024, it's 6 o'clock, and uh, uh, Pastor Pete had this uh, spot, but since he's no longer with us, I asked if I could uh, take the spot, so I'll be doing this until further notice. So, uh, my name is Ben Hikes, and I'm going to be talking about prayer tonight. Now, I'm going to start in Ephesians 6, verses 9 through, or 10 through 19. Well, let's, I'll let you turn to that right now. Ephesians chapter 6, and starting at verse 10 and going through to 19. Now let's start off with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, as we come before you this evening, we give you thanks for another day you've given us. You've given us a beautiful day, a day of beautiful sunshine, nice weather. And Lord, we give you thanks for, for the time you've allowed us to come together. So we just pray that your Holy Spirit would move in our, in our midst and that your word would not return void, but it would accomplish what you have set it forth to do. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we, Ephesians 6, verse 9, or 10. Verse, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now you can see that that is that is so true today. You know, the awful, evil wickedness that is going on in, in this world. But, but it's not against flesh and blood. We, we shouldn't be taking up arms of weapons and guns and all that to, to fight against our enemy. For our enemy is is a spiritual against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take upon you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked, and, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So, so we need to uh, put on our all, whole armor. This should be in a daily task not just when we come to come to church or 
or anything like that. It should be a daily process. And then verse 19 and tw- 18 and 19. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that's Paul writing, and, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel. And then verse 20 also, for which I am an ambassador in, in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as they ought to speak. That's, that's my prayer also. I, and I pray that, that when I stand up here before you that, that I may have the utterance and praying and with all prayer and suffocation in the spirit that that the word would go forth and it and it be understood. And then just below that is Philippians. Philippians one uh, verses three through four no three through eleven. And this is also Paul talking. As I thank my God upon every remembrance of, of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy. Okay, let's read that fourth verse again. Always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will complete, will perform it until the day of the Jesus Christ. So he's, he's, uh, he's thinking of these people that he's writing to. He says, every time I, I think of you, I, I pray for you. And how many of us uh, do that also? When we think of a, a relative or a loved one uh, that, that we should we should put up a, a prayer for them when we think about them. Even as it is meet for me to thank, to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, insomuch as both in bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. See, he says when he thinks about, about them and because they're in his heart, or in our hearts, then we should we should pray for them that 
that they would receive the gospel and and that they're yeah that you are partakers of my grace for God is my record how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ And as I pray that, and this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in the knowledge and in all judgment. That ye may approve things that are excellent that ye may be sincere and without offense until the day of Christ. And that's what I and that's what I pray. I pray that that, that love would abound and and yet even more increase in knowledge. And, all, and he says, and also in judgment. Um, so as I, as I expound the word, I pray that you would also increase in your knowledge and, and not just take my word for what, you know, what I say, but be like the Bereans who, like uh, the Apostle Paul said, that they were more noble because they searched the scripture daily to see if what, what was being taught was true. So I hope that you would, you would do the same thing. And being full with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. That, and then uh, Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your meditation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So let your, in verse 5, it says, let your moderation be known unto all men. Let what you what you allow, what you permit, what you uh, accomplish, and what you, you know, what you don't allow, so let it be known unto all men. And be careful for nothing, verse 6 says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. See, the reason I'm bringing this out is, is because after the service um, and 
I have it set uh, at 7 o'clock that we would go into a prayer meeting and we would pray for revival. Revival for this church. Well, first of all, revival for our, our own selves. We have to look inside ourselves. If we want revival, it has to start with with ourselves. And it says, let your moderation be known unto all men and be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication. So when we pray, we need to look to the Lord, you know, supplication, and it says with thanksgiving. So we have to, we want to thank the Lord for, uh, for his salvation, for his guidance and wisdom, for his Holy Spirit. And it says, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, so keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then I have Matthew, Matthew chapter 21. This is where, where Jesus was Oh, he, <clears throat> when Jesus was in Jerusalem, well, he left the city and went out and found a fig tree. It says, verse 19 of Matthew 21. And when he saw the fig tree, oh, he was hungry. Now verse 18, and in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered, or he was hungry. And when he saw the fig tree in, in the way, he came to it and found nothing upon it but leaves only. And unto it, and he said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the, the fig tree withered away. And when his disciples saw it, they marveled and said, how soon is the fig tree withered away? And he was verse 21. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith, and doubt not, ye shall not only do this, which is done to the fig tree, but also ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and it shall be done. And then verse 22. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. So, if you believe in your heart when you pray, Believe that you will receive it when you ask. Another place it says, you know, when, when, uh, when 
Jesus was talking. And he said, uh, if you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much, how much more will, will God give you the Holy Spirit if you ask? And if you ask in faith believing, you will receive it. So uh, when we pray this evening, let's believe in our hearts that, that what we're praying for is actually going to happen. Because how many times we pray and then we think, well, I don't, I don't know for sure if this is... Yeah, when, when, uh, when you pray and you say, when you pray for someone, someone's soul, but then you say, if it's the Lord's will. But it's the Lord's will for every man to be saved. It's not, it's not God's will for someone to be lost. So when you pray, pray believing that that, that soul will, will come into the kingdom. And so James 5, 16. James chapter 5, verse 16 says, Confessing your faults one to another and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. And this is uh, the second part. It says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So, let's go back up to uh, verse 13. Is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. You see that often when at, at the end of the services, uh, Pastor Mike asks if anybody needs needs healing, need, and and they'll anoint him with oil and pray over him. Said the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Is confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Now, I heard Pastor Pete say that this says Confess your faults one to another. Now he said that, and he was. Uh, he says, it doesn't say confess your sins one to another. It says confess your faults, uh, and pray for one another. See, First John one nine says, if you confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we confess our, we confess our sins to God or to Jesus, but we confess our faults one to another. So, you know, you, you can take it, take it or leave it, however you, you wanna, you wanna believe that, 
but uh, that's that's what I have for you. Uh, oh, it's only 25, 25 minutes. I told Michael it would probably be a half hour or 45 minutes. But, um, but that's what I have. Let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, as we come before you to close this service, we just pray that you would take the words that I spoke and may they be heeded. May people understand that their, that their duty is to pray and, and how to pray. And we just pray that your your word will go forth to accomplish what you have set it forth to do. So lead, guide, and direct in all things we say and do. And we'll ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.